the question is convert both 1 plus root 3i and minus 2 minus 2i into polar form and hence express z which is equal to 1 plus root 3i over minus 2 minus 2i in the form r cis theta. Okay, so what is polar form? Uh, that would be the r cis theta. That r cis theta there is the polar form. So I need to write both of those numbers as an r cis theta um, and then I should hopefully be able to divide them by using the rules of cis. Okay, so let's start with the first one. And um, just from looking at other examples, I know that the best way to convert to polar form is to first draw a diagram of what your complex number looks like on the complex plane. So let's see. It's 1 plus root 3i. So 1 plus root 3i. So that's here. like that. So there's one on the axis. So that dot there, just here, is 1 plus root 3i. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to convert that to polar form. So polar form um, uses an r, which is the length of your complex number, so mod z, um, but it's this distance just here and uses um, an angle theta which is measured from the positive real axis, so this angle here. So we can figure out the r, that would be the length of my complex number, but it also comes from Pythagoras' theorem, so 1 squared plus the square root of 3 squared, which would be uh, 1 plus 3, so that's the square root of 4, which is 2. And theta, well I can use trigonometry to find that, tan theta would be opposite over adjacent, so tan theta would be root 3 on 1. Tan theta would be root 3 on 1. Now let me just uh, think about what that is. Um, it looks, uh, looks like one that's familiar. That would be 60 degrees, so theta is pi on 3. So therefore, 1 plus root 3i is equal to r, which is 2, cis of theta, which is pi on 3. So I've expressed that number in polar form. Let's do the next one. So the next number is minus 2 minus i. So there's minus 2, sorry, minus 2 minus 2i. And there's minus 2i. So my complex number is here. And in the same way as trigonometry, I draw my triangle back to the x-axis. So this distance here is 2, and this distance here is 2, and I want r. Now, the theta I actually want is this angle from the x-axis, or possibly this angle, either one will do, now the one that's between minus pi and pi is called the principal argument. It's the one that we traditionally use because it's got the smallest value. If you use this one here, it'll be a bit less minus, but less than pi. Um, and the other one will be a bit more than pi. So we choose the angle that gives the smallest um, possible size for that angle. Alright, but either way, we really want to know what this one is. Because then we can figure it out, that theta there. So let's see, r is the square root of uh, 2 squared plus 2 squared. Technically I could write this, minus 2 squared minus 2 squared, because that's the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate. Both of them are acceptable. I'm getting mine straight from the diagram, so I'm going to use the plus versions. So that's the square root of 4 plus 4, which is the square root of 8. Now, um, I've been trained to always look to see if I can pull out a square root of something. So that's actually 2 times 4. So I can square root the 2, which will give me root 2, and square root the 4, which will give me 2. So 2 root 2. And the tan of the theta that I've marked in the diagram is 2 on 2, which is 1. And theta would therefore be 45 degrees, so theta is pi on 4. And therefore the angle 
for my um, my R sys theta uh, won't be that theta. It will be um, minus three quarters of pi because I've got minus pi, um, and then I've um, come back a little bit. So let's see. Uh, minus two minus two i is equal to. So therefore, minus two minus two i is equal to two root two. That's the r and cis uh, minus three pi on four. So I've converted them both to polar form now. Let's do the next bit of the question. So it says that I need to find this number. Z is equal to one plus root three i over minus two minus two i. Okay. And um, well, I converted the other numbers to polar form, so I might as well put that in. So that was equal to two cis pi on three over two root two cis minus three pi on four. Okay, why does that help? Well, I'm sure there's a rule for dividing complex numbers in polar form. Yes, that's it. Um, the numbers divide as normal, so we can cancel out the two, so we get one on root two. And the scissors act like powers, so when you divide scissors, you actually subtract the angles. So that would be cis of pi on 3 minus the angle on the bottom, which is 3 pi on 4. So that would be 1 on root 2 cis of pi on 3 plus 3 pi on 4. We need to put them over a common denominator, so times this one by 4, which would be 4 pi on 12, plus times this one by 3, 9 pi on 12 which would be 1 on root 2 cis of uh, 13 pi on 12. Now, I know that um, cis is a lot like sine and cos. It comes out to the same answer if I uh, add 2 pi. So what I've actually got there is, um, well, that's 1 pi, haven't I? Well, let's just draw a picture of that. So I've got um, 1 on root 2, so that's the r, and the angle is 13 pi on 12, so that's pi plus 1 more pi on 12, 13 pi on 12, and that is 1 on root 2. I really should use the principal argument, since that's tradition, so I should actually come back from here and that would be pi minus pi on 12. So that would actually be 1 on root 2 cis minus 11 pi on 12. I mean, both of those answers are correct, but it's traditional um, to use the principal argument. So that's the end of the question.